In order to get ready for the last kind of separable differential equation that we're going to solve, we need to remember how to solve equations that contain logarithms, and specifically natural logarithms. So if I look at this equation, natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1 equals x squared plus 5, I want to undo whatever it is that's happening to y. But y is inside absolute value bars, which is like a grouping symbol, and that whole expression, y minus 1, is having its natural log taken. A way to undo a natural log is with what we call exponentiation. That just means making both sides of your equation the exponent on a base of e. So this is what I would write. I would write e to the natural log of absolute value of y minus 1. Oops, that should be an absolute value bar. Equals e to the x squared plus 5. So now whatever was the left and right side of the equation is now each um, the exponents on a base of e. So a base of e and a natural log undo each other. So what I have left over on the left hand side is the absolute value of y minus 1 equals e to the x squared plus 5. Um, and now my next job is to I'm still working on isolating y, but y is inside absolute value bars. So the real way that we undo absolute value bars is with plus or minus signs, because that's what absolute value bars do. They either leave the expression alone or they change that expression to its opposite. So if I want to take the bars off on the left-hand side to get y minus 1, then on the right-hand side, I'm going to need to use a positive or a negative sign. And that would apply to the whole right-hand side of the equation. Now here I didn't really need grouping symbols because the only thing I had was one base with one exponent. So in this case those parentheses were not necessarily necessary, but they are critical if you're doing this with a different kind of expression on the right. Uh, one last step if I'm trying to isolate y, I'm going to add 1. Maybe have a plus or minus sign. Try to add your, whatever you're adding, in front of it. So we end up with this nice expression. The notation is nice. y equals 1 plus or minus e to the x squared plus 5. That's how to solve an equation that contains a natural logarithm. So here's the separable differential equation. I want to find uh, y if I know dy dx equals 5y, and if my solution function has f of 0 equals to 2. So I'm going to start with dy dx equals dy dx equals 5y. Notice that's a derivative that is that depends on y but not on x. So notice here dy dx, I'm going to multi multiply both sides by dy dx. I'm going to get dy equals 5y dx. I have to ask myself, what's happening on the right-hand side with y? If I want it, that y to not be on the right, well, y is a factor, so I'm going to fix that by dividing both sides by y. I'll end up with dy over y equals 5 dx. Could I have divided by 5y and moved the 5 over to the left-hand side? I could, but since we're going to end up having to isolate y at the end, the less we move over to the left, the easier our work at the end is going to be. Um, so you'd still get the same answer, but you're going to find it simplifies your life a little bit. If you leave any constants, leave anything you can on the right with the x's, so we have less work to do later isolating the y. So now I have my dy's and my y's on the left, I have my x's and my dx's on the right, and I'm going to integrate both sides. It looks like slapping a radical on both sides. So on the left-hand side, I have the antiderivative of 1 over y. That is the natural log of the absolute value of y. It's going to equal, on the other hand, on the other side, the antiderivative of 5. That's pretty easy. That's 5x. Don't forget your plus c. Now we're going to do kind of what we did in that last little example. I want to try to isolate y. But y is stuck inside a natural log problem. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make e the base. Make both of those the x 
exponents. This is called exponentiating. So on the left hand side, e to the natural log of cancels out and I'm going to end up with change from red, the absolute value of y on the right, on the left. Over here, notice I have the e to the 5x plus c. You can do what we've been doing, which is after I finish this next step, stop and figure out what c is and then put it back. You might find that your work is a little easier if you notice this here. When I have two powers with the same base and I multiply them, I can add the exponent. But that means when I have a power that has an exponent, which is a sum, I can split it back up into a product. So if we think of this as e to the 5x times e to the c, our work is going to become a little bit easier if we can notice this. e is a constant, 2.71828. c is some constant. So if I take a constant, I raise it to a constant power, I'm going to have just some other new constant. It is conventional, it is not required, but it is conventional at this point to replace e to the c, which is some constant, with a new constant a. Again, it's not required, but you'll find that it sometimes makes the algebra quite a lot easier because we're still going to have to figure out what a is and we're still going to have to figure out how to isolate y. So here I'm going to move me out of the way. The absolute value of y equals a e to the 5x. At this point, usually I would stop and figure out what c is. Now I'm going to stop and figure out what a is. I know this ordered pair, f of 0 equals 2. That means when x is 0, y is 2. So the absolute value of 2 equals a e to the 5 times 0. 5 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So the absolute value of 2 equals a times 1. So a is going to be the absolute value of 2, which is 2. So here I conclude a equals 2. I'm going to erase the other side and go back here. So I, Now that I've figured out what a is, I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to get the absolute value of y equals 2e to the 5x. So then I'm trying to isolate y, so y is equal to... If I undo absolute value bars, I have to put a positive or negative sign on the right-hand side on the other side, in this case on the right hand side, 2e to the 5x. And then I'm going to have to ask myself, because what I've written for my y is not a function, has that plus or minus sign, and functions are supposed to give you exactly one answer. So this is giving me two answers. I have to go back to this original initial value and say when x is 0, I need my y to be positive 2, so I'm going to choose the plus sign, and I decide that y equals positive 2e to the 5x. I'm going to double check that when I replace x with 0, I get e to the 0, which is 1, times 2, which is 2. And I'm going to show you how to take the derivative just to double check your answer. Um, before I do that, I'm not going to have to write a domain statement because e to the 5x, um, there's no restrictions on what you put in an exponent. No restrictions on the real numbers. So here the domain is all real numbers. I'm going to show you how to take the derivative and check our answer here. Once I decide on my y, I'm going to find dy dx. So dy dx is going to equal this 2, which is a multiplier, and then e to the 5x times the derivative of the exponent is 5. So notice that that's going to be... If y is 2e to the 5x, dy dx equals 2e to the 5x is y times 5, which was my original differential equation.
That must be the correct solution.